on bits. Whatever you want. A nice shiny new beat on bits. Beat on bits, a real winner. There's always room for beat on bits. Just gotta love beat on bits. Hey everybody, uh, welcome to episode number nine of the Beat on Bits podcast. This is a show where I talk about passions, projects, and playlists with some pretty cool people, myself included. <laughs> I'm your host, my name is Brandon, and joining me today we have Jean-Francois, or Jeff, or <laughs> Precious Viper. Yeah, we can say that too. <laughs> Say hello, Jeff. Hi, Jeff, or oh, hello, Jeff. <laughs> uh, so, I know Jeff through another friend, Yahweh, who I know through my wife, Jane, and well, I don't remember where we met exactly, so I'm just going to make up a story and say, we met here. <laughs> <laughs> we met just now. Yeah, I can't remember either where we met. So. Yeah, I don't know. Do you have those friends where you, you've just known them for a while, but you just never remember exactly where or how you met? Yeah, I know a few of those people, and it's really weird. It's like yeah. they just they were just popped into your life here, and then, yeah, you just take it from there. They appear by magic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Jeff, uh, he, you work in retail, yeah. and... You have some pretty pretty interesting hobbies. Um, would you like to share some of those with us? Maybe give give us a little brief introduction on who you are and the kind of things you're interested in. Yeah. So, um, well, I'm French Canadian, so I have a thick accent. It's from uh, Quebec. Yeah, from Quebec. Um, so yeah. Um, well, I moved here to learn English, and I never moved away because I like it. Um, I'm really passionate about art. Um, like all kinds of art? All kinds of arts. Like I like painting, drawing. That's true. If, you, if you've ever been here, we're at Jeff's house right now and <laughs> he has like nice paintings all over the walls. It's, it's a sh- You can see a couple in the, in the upper corner here. But yeah, there's lots and lots more. <laughs> uh, beside that, like, I love like doing nails. I like makeup, mm-hmm. like everything makeup related. I love it. Uh, I worked a little bit like in the makeup world by being a drag queen um, back in Quebec and now it's just like I just I'm just experiment experimenting like makeup on myself right now and on my friends <laughs> cool so have you uh, so I guess we can just start there with the whole uh, makeup and, and drag thing um, how did your experience go in Quebec and kind of like what got you into it and what kind of exciting events have you been to or experiences have you uh, went through with the whole world of with, drag? Um, well, it started because in high school I was uh, in art and I was doing drama too. Mm-hmm. So I, ha- I had friends that heard that I did drama at school. So they had a drag show and they wanted me to host it. But I was like, I'm not a drag queen. So I was like, that's awkward. But I was like, well, I like everything about like drama and everything's and acting so I was like well let's do it so I had to create my own drag um, character oh and I hosted that one night and after that I really liked it it was fun because I was able to play with makeup and like create something different yeah is is it common to kind of have a, a drag show in high schools in Quebec. <laughs> it wasn't in high school. Well, I did kind of drag stuff in high school, but not okay. really. Yeah. So I did uh, in high school. We had a talent show, and um, it was at the time that Janet Jackson like revealed her breast. Oh the, yeah. At the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to recreate that. Oh, okay. And I actually did it. Like I dressed up oh, as. Oh, did you get the the, the nipple shield thing? Uh, it was in high school, so I had like a bra under it, and I had like a star that I, oh, okay, it okay. showed it showed something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's pretty good. Was a big shock. <laughs> <laughs> um, this wasn't in high school. This was after high school, like oh, okay, okay. drag show. Yeah. Oh, so it was just like a general uh, drag show. Yeah. And then somebody asked you to. Okay. To do it, yeah. Cool. Uh, a few years after, a few years, I think a year after, yeah. I got asked to perform in a in a high school. Oh, okay. And just like to like, sh- like make like the student more like open minded. Mm. It was pretty cool. Yeah, that sounds really cool. <laughs> yeah. How did that go? It was it was good actually. Like everybody was really like welcoming and everybody was so curious about everything about oh. drag. Yeah. So they're already pretty open to begin with. Yeah. And then most of them just yeah. got to see some more. Yeah. That's cool. 
Have you done a lot of those shows or? Um... For shows in Montreal, I've done like quite a bit because I moved to Montreal after that. Mm -hmm. um, to start, like, because it's kind of hard to like have a foot in Montreal because I'm so many drag queens. Oh yeah. I started with like the Miss uh, Drag Queen 2010. It was like a, a contest there. Okay. And after that, I didn't. Win. I, I went a few rounds and I got kicked oh, out. Okay. <laughs> I didn't had enough experience, but it was fun. Um, Do you remember like the some of the really strong performers in that one competition specifically, or? I can't remember who won actually. Oh, so they weren't that special anyway. If you don't remember, them. <laughs> <laughs> it's having like one of the contestant actually. Um, he live in, in in Edmonton too. Oh, really? Yeah, he moved cool. here too. It's funny. Hmm. Um, yeah, after that, after that challenge, I got hired as a shooter drag to sell shooters in oh. that. Um, Bar. Like in a club there or something? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it was like a lesbian bar. <laughs> so a lesbian bar, but they had like male drag queens serving? Or? Yeah, because the lesbians really liked the drag queens. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I, I was um, watching like a, something on YouTube, I think, where it was about like girls getting into drag and how it's really hard for girls to do it because like the guys really want it to be their own thing kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Do you find it's like that or is it pretty um, open to girls doing drag too? Most girls that do drags, they are called like drag king because they reverse mm. it as a guy. Mm -hmm. They have some girls that stay as girls too, but I think it's pretty hard for them. Mm. Yeah, because the drag world is more like as a guy dressing as a girl or a girl dressed as a guy. Yeah. Um, they have transgender that do it too. We see it a lot in RuPaul Drag, ra drag Race now. Really? Yeah. The Wait, there's some transgender ones? Yeah. Oh, I didn't see that. Wait. No, well, it had a few that came out. Oh, I, I can't even like remember. Maybe it was just like I can't remember the names. Too well done that I didn't even think about it. The yeah, a few of them came out in the season. Oh yeah, I remember. Oh, what was her it's name? I think Carmen Herrera. I think her name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, it was like I uh, the other ones. she she was in the same season as uh, Bianca Del Rio, right? Like one of them I was transgender. So. I think like kind of a uh, like. A black dude or the black lady? I forgot. It's like very light skin. I don't remember who it was, but I think, like they're uh, shame on me. Yeah, <laughs> no. uh, we can't remember, and both feel very bad about this. But, oh no! Yeah, it definitely happened before. I I remember now yeah. that you mention it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaking of RuPaul's Drag Race, though, I thought that was so like really amazing. That was my I think first exposure to drag, and then seeing kind of the amount of effort that these people go through to make the character and like do the performance and everything it's like uh, you know how there's triple threats in the music industry where someone does all three areas of uh acting singing and dancing i want to say uh, dancing I yeah i think dancing yeah dancing. but the drag queens are like it's like a f like five-way threat because it's like acting singing dancing and they're also um creating all the costumes yeah, so and, and like doing their makeup and then yeah costumes and makeup it's it's like that much more and branding. difficult and, and branding, <laughs> branding yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, i'm sure yeah because is it common for them to have like agents that get them gigs and stuff and oh yeah maintain their yeah lots of drag queens have agents actually oh, okay. yeah cool it's easier for them so the, the agent just take care of like the booking and everything yeah. And so like that, they just go where they, they are told to go. Yeah, yeah, it's really it's really impressive. So if anyone watching has not seen RuPaul's Drag Race or experienced some kind of drag performance, I would highly recommend it. Watch it, it's on, ne on Netflix. Yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> Netflix is not paying us to say this. No. But <laughs> I wouldn't be opposed to it if they wanted to. <laughs> yeah. So uh, where, how have you been involved in like the drag community and drag world or anything related to that lately well here lately i haven't been beside oh, okay. watching rupaul no uh, yeah. since i moved here i i'm not involved really because i had a hard time like to get like kind of accepted in montreal and moving here it was like a brand new like to start over kind of yeah thing. so oh, okay. i didn't want to go all over that again yeah because it can be pretty hard to get accepted in How's the community in Edmonton for that anyway? Probably not as big as Montreal, I assume. Not as big. It's, yeah. it's, 
it's okay. It's pretty big, but not as big as as in Montreal. There's so much competition, so they have like oh. really good drag queens too. Yeah, yeah. Here, and um, I don't know that much. I know a little bit from going to the the gay bar, but there's only like one or two gay bars here too, right? Only one now. Only one now. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's too bad. But I don't know. Is it, is it always like? totally full and so much that you wish there was another one to go to or is it still it's managing okay on its, it's own. managing okay okay well it used to be i feel like it used to be more busy but now it, i think it depends which kind of event they have now yeah 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 and you said they've had some drag queens there too right oh yeah i've met a few drag queens there from rupaul actually oh yeah that's so cool oh yeah that's yeah fun. <laughs> yeah I've, I've never been or or seen the drag queens in person but it would be kind of cool no. to see oh. that it's so yeah. fun. I like it. <laughs> Has Jane went with you any of those times or? No. Okay. Well, when I met, I met only like Kennedy Davenport at um, Evolution. Okay. But I met the other ones at the different like gay pride event. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's only like once a year though, right? Uh, the gay pride event? Yeah. No, it's all, all year long. Every few months they have some. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. They call it like pure pride. Cool. No, I always thought it was like a one once a year thing it's what I thought too but they have it like all year long they have like special event that they plan it's just we don't really hear about it except when it's having the gay prime so there's still like one main one every yeah, year when they have, there's some smaller ones throughout the year mm-hmm. still. when they have the gay pride they have like a main one but around the year they have other ones too okay cool cool how do you find out about these things I found out like the first one I found out just because I like like it was like uh, Willem Detox and uh, Vicky that came by, and I really liked them. Ah. They like were like forming a group. I'm saying were because we're yeah, not yeah, together yeah. anymore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I just heard that they were coming, so it's hard to find out about that event. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. that's a event that has been happening for a while, <laughs> and you only first found out about it because you know these people who are. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, that's cool. Yet a few uh, like the years before they had other event like this too I just never heard about it Mm. and so you may not be doing drag per se but you're still kind of doing like makeup and makeup tutorials yeah I'm trying to uh, because makeup is like such a big thing for me like I love makeup Mm. Um, I don't wear it every day but I love makeup like to like play with is such a good art Mm. so I'm trying I'm trying to push myself to be able to develop like maybe like a YouTube channel. I don't know where I want to go yet with it, but yeah. I want to create tutorials. Yeah. I've tried to do some makeup live on Facebook. Right. It's kind of channel ch- challenge for, but I'm trying to do like to push myself to do it. Mm-hmm. So many people keep asking me to teach them and like to do videos or like some anything kind of to guides. teach. Yeah. Yeah. But I need to find the best way for me. I got asked recently to do it on Instagram. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, uh, does Instagram have live? Or are you just like they doing a story kind of they thing? They have live, but I have like a friend that she's doing um, uh, tutorials on Instagram too. It's like oh. shorter videos. Ah. Instead, it's, instead of like teaching the whole thing. Mm-hmm. They, um, it's a small piece. Yeah, they just show like the, the main thing of it. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. And then easy for people to watch like anytime because mm-hmm. it's so short. Yeah, it's shorter. It's... Cool. Are you going to try that out or? I would like to, yeah. <laughs> What's stopping you? <laughs> I don't know. And for me, it's the editing that is stopping me. Because oh. I have, no, I'm not the best with computers. <laughs> Do you have to edit it though? Can't you just like film from your phone and then it just goes? I think I would need to edit it. Yeah. Because oh, okay. you need to go from like because you still need to show the product you're using and you go back with applying ah I see, I see. So you need to zoom and you need to play with yeah fair enough the video yeah yeah and then I, I assume like if you're really if you're really passionate about it you don't just want to put anything up right you want to put a lot of effort into it you and need make to, it look yeah, good need to, and need to show a good end result yeah yeah that's true I'm I, I guess I, I guess I'm not at that level with my my videos because I'm just recording it and putting it up well it depends well, yeah. if it's like an interview or an interview or like like a chat what do we do like, yeah um, you don't always need to edit it yeah because you see true. like the real thing yeah yeah I don't know I don't know if that's what people want exactly yet because uh, there hasn't been too many comments or too many views for any of my stuff yet but maybe we'll see if more people if I keep doing it regularly I think people might might get used to it and um, might have more to say about it so we'll see. We'll see where it goes. But yeah, I'm totally open to 
changing the style and how I edit things and things like that. I do like the format right now because you s- if like, s- by example, like for me, yeah. like if like I have a hard time to like pronounce some words sometimes and yeah. if I'm like messing up with something, you see it, you, people will be able to laugh about it. So I think that's funny like to see like the real thing. You I guess that, yeah, that's true too. <laughs> yeah, it's just, the, I guess the one thing that I'm thinking about that won't be too fun for people is that it's so long. Like... Uh, last time when I put the video up with my friend Vivian, my dad actually watched, tried to watch it and then he was like, it's, I tried to watch that video you uploaded, but it's 45 minutes. You can't expect me to sit there for 45 minutes. And then you're just talking about like, where are you working? I'm not going to watch that, (laughs) but it's my dad. So fair enough. Maybe older audiences don't care too much, but if it's people closer to our age, like in their late teens or anywhere in their 20s and stuff maybe they find it more interesting because i know that what got me into podcasting was listening to other podcasts even though they're long it's pretty fun to listen to the things they're talking about and learn something here and there and it kind of motivates you sometimes to like try things out or yeah and then when i watch my own i see weird things that i do and then when i watch it back i'm like oh oh why am i doing that why am i saying this yeah <laughs> So I think it's really good for me personally to work on things that I can improve with myself. And then maybe if the guests are on and watch themselves, they'll be like, oh, maybe I don't want to say this thing or, oh, I never knew I did, never knew I did that or something. I guess I'll find out. Yeah, you'll find out. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know, on like most of my (laughs) bad habits. Oh, okay. (laughs) What are some of the bad habits you, you wish you could change or that you've, maybe some that you've already changed? For me, it's more like the way I talk, like, because English is not my first language. Yeah. I'm always trying to like improve it, but because like I didn't grow up with it, it's for me it's hard to to like to just like I would need to, to think so much to be able mm. to pronounce all like all my sentence like perfectly. So sometimes like if I will watch myself like I will later. Yeah. Like I will realize that oh, like I, my sentence doesn't make sense sometimes. Yeah. But it's okay. Do I think it's what it's making my chore. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Do you want to say anything to yourself for yourself watching later? <laughs> right now? No, no, it's okay. <laughs> Don't watch. <laughs> <laughs> Stop watching now. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, that's, that's really cool though because that's a good point of learning a new language and not being totally comfortable with how you sound because you, you're, I would say you're fluent in English at least because I can talk to you no mm-hmm. problem and you can understand me no problem. But for someone learning new languages who's not even like close to that level, um, I know for me especially, it's really it's hard to listen to myself or try to push myself forward with learning more Korean because I'm like I have no idea what they're talking about or I have no idea how to form this sentence in my head. And sometimes it's kind of demotivating to learn more when you f- you know you know so little. Mm-hmm. So if you can maybe just like guide me through your journey to learning more English. Did, oh my did, God. I know it's probably been a lifelong thing, but I just, I'm just really curious how it kind of is integrated into education in Quebec and how in it Quebec, kind of brought I you was, outside. Uh, I would say that at school, it's not that good. No? They don't, like they teach you English, but it's not that good. My English teacher mm-hmm. was like a French guy from France. Oh, really? <laughs> and it was a terrible experience. So um, I didn't learn much. I always wanted to be bilingual, mm-hmm. so I really had to push myself, like, to emerge myself to learn it. How did you emerge yourself? So, what I did is that I went to an exchange program. So I went with Canada World Youth. Oh. So my program was three months in BC and three months in Namibia in Africa. Oh wow! And I personally picked an English program. Yeah. And they asked me, they were like, "Are you sure you don't want a French program?" I was like, "No, I want I want to learn English." Yeah. And I think they thought I was crazy. <laughs> Because I was the only one not speaking English in my program. Oh, really? Yeah. So you really, really immerse yourself into it. Yeah. I started the program saying like, hi, my name is Jeff. And I was saying, it's okay. That's it? (laughs) So they were talking to me and I was just answering back like, it's okay. And I was just walking away, not knowing what they talked about. (laughs) That's funny. There's there's this old TV show I used to watch called Student Bodies. Did you ever hear of it? Uh, I'm not sure I've heard about it. It was on I think YTV, like the uh, on on cable television. And then there was one episode where they had this exchange student from Quebec or from France, 
And then the only English she knew is yes, thank you. And then, so this one guy always, he, she was really attractive. So he wanted to like take her on a date. And he was like, hey, I like your shoes. And she's like, yes, thank you. She's like, would you want to go out sometime? She's like, yes, thank you. And he's like, talked to his buddy. He's like, hey, I just got a date with this girl. And she said yes. And he's like, are you sure it wasn't yes, thank you? He's like, what's the difference? He's like, hey, you want to go blow up a liquor store after school? Yes, thank you. <laughs> Oh my god, it's basically what I was doing. Yeah. Like they put me, uh, we had like a work placement. So the first three months I was uh, working in an organic farm mm. and they were asking me, asking me to do stuff and I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. I kept saying for me it was like simple life, like the reality show. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it was a mess. It was a mess. I didn't know what I was doing. Wait, I didn't in understand. BC or, or in, in BC? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It took me, before I started to, to really like speak a little bit more yeah it took me like over a month oh okay. it was pretty quick yeah that sounds pretty quick to be able to talk a little bit more and after that one day i started to learn a little bit more and like they were saying like oh you can't you don't stop talking <laughs> <laughs> then you talk too much <laughs> <laughs> like i learned i really learned by pointing like stuff and oh to know did you what. find yourself using french words while you were speaking english to them or you just tried to speak 100 percent in english I was trying to like speak English as much as I can. Yeah. Um, like even like sometimes like it happens that I'm trying to say some words and I only know them in French, and I will ask how do you say a word and sometimes I realize it's the same thing. Oh yeah, that's like, true. I don't even Lots say it because I don't really know. Similar, yeah. 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 Hmm. yeah, that's a good point. I find that uh, I've I've tried learning French, uh, Spanish, Cantonese, Mandarin. Uh, Japanese and Korean and I find that actually in a lot of those there's quite a few words that are really similar to the English one where yeah it's it's kind of interesting to see that across so many languages yeah some lang language have like really lots of similarities yeah yeah it's, that's fun to know yeah it's I think it's just because English speakers are so weird that they come up with something so crazy <laughs> that there's no word for that in another language. <laughs> yeah but English is the same thing too in some areas because there's some expressions and stuff that come from other languages too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like like resume is a French word, right? Yeah, um, yes, we can say resume, but we call it like a, a CV, a CV. Like the letters like CV. Yeah, yeah I or think. curriculum vitae. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we yeah, call it yeah. more like this. This, this, that's the same in English too. You mm -hmm. can use those, and then we English just doesn't have its own word for it, for whatever reason. But yeah, it's pretty cool how like there's still these connections that you can mm -hmm. make. Yeah. So yeah, I'm trying really hard to submerge myself into Korean more too, with like watching some shows and um, listening to some audio clips and stuff. But it's still not not even close. Sometimes Jane will like say things to me, and I have no idea what she's talking about. I'm trying to learn some Tagalog and I'm, I'm having a hard time. <laughs> yeah, oh, Tagalog like sounds it. really hard yeah. too, especially when it's like your third language. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for those who don't know, Tagalog is uh, one of the main languages in the, the, in Philippines, the Philippines. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Tagalog and English and they have all the other ones too. Yeah. And I don't know. <laughs> no, it was really cool. I was in the bank like earlier this week and then uh, they said like the languages they offer and one was Tagalog. You can do your banking in Tagalog in Edmonton, which yeah. is pretty cool. Well, there's not, it's having lots of people that speak Tagalog. Oh, a really? Lot. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. You uh, recently just saw a famous Filipino performer oh, yeah, who came yeah. to Edmonton, right? You want to tell us my, about that? I saw Mikey that? Bustos, the I love, P I love Speedo guys. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I just I, I love that guy. He's so funny. Yeah, his videos are so funny, and they're they're so good too. Mm -hmm. I like it. Like the music is, he's almost like the, the next like major parody star, like Weird Al. Yankovic. Oh yeah. yeah. He's like he started to be like on uh, Canadian Idol, and after oh, that, really? yeah, he got contracts in the Philippines to do like commercials. Oh, so he's originally from Canada. He's from Toronto. Oh, yeah. cool! I didn't know that. Yeah, he's a Filipino guy that grew up in Toronto. Yeah. And he moved in uh, Manila because he got more contract there after uh, Canadian Idol. Oh, yeah. And he switched it up. He, he was trying to like work more on television and um, cinema. Oh, okay. But it didn't work out like he wanted to. Oh. So he switched, like, he, he went back with YouTube, like yeah, his yeah. first love. And he's, 
did the Alders parodies and it's so funny. Yeah, it's crazy how just something can just take off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, his parodies are really popular and he's like having his vlogs now that like are just booming too. Mm. But he's having like his first YouTube channel, is, like he's still having it, is that uh, Ant Canada, I think he called it. It's all about ants and bugs. What? Yeah, <laughs> no, nobody knows about that. Yeah, but he's, <laughs> he's actually really popular for, for the people that love bugs. Oh, and he, he recently just said that he's like, this channel is booming right now. The bugs channel. Yeah. Oh wow. People are asking him to make more videos, but what are the, have you? Did you watch any of those? What are those no. like? No. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to watch those. But yeah, I, I like bugs, but I prefer his like vlogs and. Yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. That. Understandably, so. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it was really cool. There, there used to be this. Well, I don't know if it was cool or just really mean, but there used to be these videos called like bug fights or bug wars. Did you ever hear of those? No. Did like, they fight? Yeah. It, oh yeah. It was like, a, and it had like a Japanese announcer, and they would bring these like big exotic bugs and put them in a tank, and then it, it would be such dramatic announcing from this Japanese guy and then these crazy bugs just instinctively fight each other in this tank. Oh my god. Yeah, I think you can find it on YouTube if you look up like Japanese bug fights or something. I don't want to watch that. <laughs> yeah, it's really <laughs> bugs. It's really gross, but it also seems kind of mean. Cause you, oh, yeah. oh my god. These bugs probably won't find each other in the wild, but they're being put here to just... Yeah. yeah. Well, but, I'm pretty sure some people like would like to watch that. Oh, definitely. People <laughs> watch really sick stuff, I think. Oh my god. <laughs> Maybe I should get some some fights on my show. No, probably not. I, I want to keep it nice. Yeah. Did that, no, that's really cool. Uh, yeah, I would have never guessed him to have a bug channel. No, uh, some people doesn't know. I, I know it because he talked about it on his uh, vlog. And oh. Because he was saying that, like money wise, it would be smarter for him to like just focus on that uh, yeah. and uh, channel because. Yeah you would make way more money yeah comparing to have three channels but oh, yeah. he likes traveling he like like doing his vlogs he likes doing his parody and he likes the bugs so for him it's all about like balancing it balancing all. everything yeah. that he likes that's yeah. a good point though because you can just like with that youtube channel or with what you do uh for anyone who doesn't have youtube or some kind of medium if you can do what makes you money or you can do what makes you happy yeah. and it's it's just perfect if you can find the balance it's not always about the money yeah that's true <laughs> but it sounds like he's in a lucky position where he likes mm -hmm. doing it and it's paying him so yeah yeah well he's saying that it's uh he's having the choice between like like all the money or having good memories making mm. me making memories and he prefer making memories yeah you can have the mm. the rich experiences instead mm. of the rich piles of cash yeah yeah but i don't know do you feel like um you're you're doing things that will give you better memories instead of better money or oh, yeah. i don't do anything about the money i don't think so yeah <laughs> because if i will be all about the money i will i think i will have like different job i will have a different career well, I will where do you think that would have yeah, taken else. you mm. I think I will push. I will have pushed more my because I don't like school. So mm. for me, I didn't push my school. Yeah, me so too. If, I think a lot of people are in the same yeah, boat if, there. If I would have been all about the money, I think I would have went back to school like way before, and I would have pushed. And I don't know. I tried to to like push it to be like hairdresser because I love hair, and oh, I realized yeah. that it was more a hobby. I didn't want it to make it my career. Yeah. So yeah, I think that scared me because I realized that something I love that it wasn't something I wanted to do. Mm. <laughs> so I didn't push anything else so far. What what yeah. kind of made you realize that it was a hobby and not something that you wanted to do professionally? Because it's something I was doing like in my like daily basis, right? I do it. I was doing it with my friends and my family. Okay. And on myself and starting to work at it and doing it all day long. Yeah. And after you go home and. You're just your tired. friends want to do your, like, want you to do their hair. You don't or, want to keep doing it. Right? Yes, yeah, so yeah. you just do it like twenty four seven. It's like, yeah. oh, it's like that's just, a little much though. I yeah. think there's not many things or many people who can do the same thing all day long and mm -hmm. really enjoy it, right? Most people will find a balance. So they will like actually like tell their friends, their family that after work they don't do anything. So they yeah. just need to go to their work. That's but that's a good for point. me. I didn't want to do that. 
Why not? I always, I always like did it for my grandmother and uh, all my friends like doing their extensions and stuff like this. And it's not something that I didn't want them to, like to pay me to do that because I never used to charge them. I guess so, but you, you they, they, I think they would understand, right? Because yeah. you're you're doing it professionally, so they should pay for your services, mm -hmm. even if you know them. Because I think that's kind of uh, unfair to like if uh, you know how there's some people where um, they'll know someone and doing a certain job and be like, hey, hey, can you get me some discounts or can yeah. you give me this for free? But if if they gave all their friends free stuff, like, are they gonna have any money yeah, for you themselves? Nothing, yeah, yeah, they're hurting themselves to help someone else and it's like their job so that's not fair mm -hmm. so i think it's okay to like they should support you by paying you to do the thing you yeah. like doing right but i was feeling bad to charge them i didn't want to oh, charge you, them <laughs> you don't need to feel bad <laughs> yeah I, I think if you like doing it and you can be paid for doing it you should you should get paid to do it right mm -hmm. yeah yeah even that's if it's true. like you can give them a discount <laughs> like i'll cut your hair for ten dollars instead of like thirty because yeah. uh, it, it's still something at least I don't know yeah because I know some people who cut hair too uh, and then they, they would like offer to do it for free like used to anyway and then they just start asking for money a few months later and it's, it's okay yeah I find it awkward I don't know when you randomly start to ask money it's like I don't know yeah it wasn't something I wanted to do fair enough yeah yeah <laughs> that, that was kind of like me for DJing stuff um, when I first got into it and friends would ask me to like DJ at a fundraiser or something I would just like doing it so I wouldn't charge anything mm -hmm. and I want to get experience and stuff too but then after some time you realize oh it's actually taking up quite a lot of my time to get things ready and spend the day there and do mm -hmm. this thing for them and then take everything home after and deal with it so I feel like I should have some money to at least cover certain parts of it like getting myself there playing for a little bit at like a cheap rates and then the renting the stuff. So I think it just, sometimes it takes some time to really feel comfortable with charging them. And yeah, you need to feel comfortable. Yeah, because you got to know what they're paying for. Mm -hmm. It's like, if you don't know, it's it's obviously going to feel weird saying, pay me and then they'll be like, for what? And you're like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, just, just pay me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just want some money. Give me some food. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's fair too. If you like, hey, I'll treat you to dinner if you do this thing for me. I'm like, yeah, sure. Like with, if somebody owns a truck and their friend's moving, they're gonna they're gonna call you, and you're gonna not want to do it. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be fun no more. It's no, not, no. Yeah, exactly. So, um, with uh, we we kind of started with dragon makeup and then moved on to <laughs> Mikey, um, and we're. I guess pretty into it we're almost at like 33 minutes now so maybe you can talk a little bit about what's next or what you want to do with these uh things that you you're passionate about whether it's the hair cutting or the drag or makeup so what for you... hair cutting i don't want I, i'm just doing it for fun i do my own hair and i do um my boyfriend's hair i, I don't really do anybody else's hair yeah, his hair that. looks good all the time though so you do a good I'm job to. yeah <laughs> When it's getting too long, I'm like, sit down, I'm going to do the haircut. <laughs> he has no choice. <laughs> um, beside that, like with makeup, I would like to push it to like do some tutorials to see if it can lead somewhere. Mm -hmm. If not, well, it's just going to be for fun. Uh, beside that, what I would really like to push um, is I want to save up some money to be able to start to do some nails. I would like to do nails from home oh. because I did some nails like when I was in Montreal yeah, yeah, and I liked it and I just got rid of everything when I moved. Uh, and do you need a lot of equipment to do that? Kind of, yeah. Uh, you need everything to be, you need to make sure that everything is like sanitary. And oh yeah, that's good. true. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they, you could cut them and stuff. So it's gotta be clean. Yeah. yeah. You need like the right equipment to make sure you're not like using the same valve for everybody. And stuff oh like yeah. This. Yeah. That's true. I never even thought about that. Because you, you can, would you be able to work in a sal like a nail salon, or they always have to kind of have their own stuff to do it? You can't just go use somebody else's. Mm, it depends where you work. Some salon have already like everything. Some others you need depending. Yeah, it depends where you are. Some others you need to have your own equipment. Mm. And but I don't think I would want to do it 
in a salon. I would just do it in my own time. Yeah. So like that when I'm not working, I can like plan around my schedule when yeah that's I good can do. you can have your own home salon yeah salon du jeff <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know how i would call it but <laughs> that'd be cool though because you could offer like hair cutting and nails and makeup <laughs> and then someone can come in and then leave looking totally like a new person <laughs> <laughs> from head to toe <laughs> yeah and that's that's an interesting thing too i don't think because i've gone for some like pedicure and manicure with jane a few times and I always only see like the Vietnamese ladies there and never any guys or anyone who's not Vietnamese. But it's the, the whole uh, like manicure, pedicure stuff originally comes from France, right? I don't as know. As far as I know. Isn't that why it's called like manicure, pedicure? Because it's like meh. It's like the hand and the kid is like foot. Yeah, I, I get, it, it would make sense. I don't know where it's coming from. I think yeah, I read I that think... somewhere. And then the reason why there's so many like Vietnamese nail salons and stuff now is because I think during like the Vietnam War or something when that was happening with the US and whatever um, people who kind of fled to the uh, to the US like they needed to work and then some people were trying to find good placements for them and there was some celebrity some movie star like back then I don't know who it was but she had her nails done like really nice mm -hmm. and then this Vietnamese lady really liked it She's like, oh, I can teach you how to do it. And she brought, like, the experts in to teach them. And apparently it all just, like, exploded she, she from there. Teach everybody else. Teach everybody <laughs> else, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's really cool how it seems to uh, have grown that way. Oh, yeah. Well, it's having, like, the... For nails, like, you have, like, the traditional, like, like mall, like, nail salon. Yeah. But it's more, like, basic. Yeah, yeah. And you can have, like, other ones that, like, do, like, those crazy nails, like... They have like nails competitions and oh stuff, really guess, yeah and they wow. have like standards like to have them like specific like everything needs to be the right measurements it's, it's really hard I've watched videos on YouTube and yeah, it's yeah. like oh crap yeah some it's look crazy. really crazy even I think just the the standard ones at like regular manicures they can take like up to an hour or more. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine, imagine how long those ones take. Like, oh yeah, they ones. can take a long time. I've watched like a videos of like someone teaching how to do like the competition nails. Yeah. It was four in four videos. In four you videos. Had to do it in four <laughs> videos. Oh wow. It's crazy. Yeah. I was like, that's too long. <laughs> yeah. I will do just like the normal nails. I don't yeah. want to do competitions. <laughs> that's nice too. Even like if you don't get any fancy stuff done, it's still like your hands and feet feel really nice after. Oh yeah. Like nice and smooth and like massaged and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really good. There's we found a nice cheap place by our house, and that we went to earlier this week. It was like thirty five or forty dollars for like a, almost an hour long pedicure. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, and then she got some nice nail polish done. They didn't give me any. I don't know why. You did it. No, I didn't. Kind of ask. It's okay. No one stays my feet anyway. I wear socks. Well, last time I got a pedicure, it was in the Philippines, and oh. I asked for clear nail polish so they will be shiny. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool though. It's uh, yeah, it's it seems like it's getting more and more common for guys to do all these same things like with the manicure pedicures. For men's is actually pretty popular doing pedicures. Lots of men's goes for pedicures. Oh really? Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, every time I've went, I've been like the only guy there. But maybe I just don't go to the yeah. popular places. I think it might just happen that you went when it had no guys. Because yeah, I've seen too. guys because I um, I used to go a lot to do my nails because yeah. I bite my nails. You see, the, I bite my nails. <laughs> and that I can get, be a message to your future self. Stop biting your nails, Jeff. Stop biting your nails. <laughs> um, so normally I get gels done. Oh, okay. And so I don't bite my nails. Yeah. And every, like almost every time I go, I see always like, like guys, like really like masculine guys, they go and they just get a pedicure. Oh, probably because uh, their wife or girlfriend is like, your feet are so disgusting. Go get your pedicure. Yeah, probably. But I think they like the massage too. Like they yeah, have the feels massage nice. chair and they like the oh, massage. I hate when they use the, the rough scrub thing on the bottom of my feet. I can't control it. Every time they touch it, my whole leg just like jerking. <laughs> yeah. They always laugh at me too. I'm like, I can't be the only one with this problem. <laughs> Every time they touch, I'm just like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> No, it it's happen it happens to lots of people. Yeah, lots of lots of I was about to say guys, guys or ladies have mm. like really sensitive and like feet too. Mm. And when you go under it, it's just like it tickles or yeah, it's, you can't help you're it. Not used to it, yeah, because that area is never touched. Uh, if you're not getting a pedicure for the most part, right? So mm -hmm. when someone does, it's like ooh, 
And what is this? Want, they asked you, do you want some cheese? Because like the cheese greeter, no. Oh, <laughs> gross. <laughs> Promotion. <laughs> oh, they never say that to me. I would be like, oh, oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> Are you going to say that to your future customers? <laughs> the one, oh, I, that would be my time to do that. If you want <laughs> cheese, I have some fresh parmesan for you. Oh, gross. <laughs> we're, we're almost getting, we're past uh, like 40 minutes now, so... Maybe we can get into music because okay. I want to keep the talk between like 40 to 50 minutes. Yeah, perfect. So it's not too, too long. So uh, Jeff chose three songs today. I chose three songs as well. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about the music you chose. So uh, I decided to like to challenge you a bit. Um, it's going to challenge me to uh, a mix, uh, a, a fresh mix challenge with songs I've never heard of before. So I picked two French songs. So okay. I picked uh, I'll just grab it here because I can't read them. Yeah, 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 no worries. Um, so the the first one I I went with like one that you like probably know it's Commander by Kelly Rowland, um, and Fritch, uh, featured by by David Guetta. It's hard we see it. Well, yeah. it's having David Guetta in there. Yeah. Um, I've recently like like refound that song on YouTube. It just mm. popped up and I was like, oh my god, I forgot about that song. Yeah, because that's an older song, right? That's From one great. of his earlier albums. Yeah, I think I recognize that one. I'm someone that listens to old songs. That's okay. Lots really of people old do. songs. Yeah. Um, and after that, I went with... Um, a song by Marie May. I love Marie May. She's from Quebec, and oh, oh, oh I just love her. Uh, it's the song uh, called Cobra, C O B I R A, because some of the dots between it. Oh. Um, I love that song, and I actually like um, recorded a music video oh, with you that did? song. Yeah, like in drag. Oh, cool! And that was so much fun. Is it's that where you kind of got your drag name from? It's Cobra, but you're Viper. No. Um, well, quick stories. Okay. Every drag queens have like a family names, and yeah. they um, most of them come from their drag mother. So the drag mother oh. is the first drag queen that helps you. Yeah, to like be a your drag queen. your mentor. So my drag mother is uh, is called uh, Cruella Viper. Ah. Um, so at first I didn't know I needed to have like her last name. So my first yeah. name was uh, Crystal Precious. Oh. So. Crystal Vipire, I didn't like it, mm. so I went with uh, Precious Vipire. Oh, okay. So this why. So this I is just Vipire. coincidence. It's just a coincidence. Okay. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, I did that music video, and Marimi actually saw that video. Oh, she I have did. Have a friend that showed it to her. Oh wow. Yeah. What did she think? Did she talk and to you or anything? Uh, I didn't talk to her. No, but oh. he said that that she liked it. Oh, that's nice. Like, ah, that it feels. It feels like nice. Yeah, maybe Mikey Busto will watch this video and see you talking about it. <laughs> so it would be nice. Yeah. Um, so, and the third one is uh, a song by Emily Bejin. It's uh, this. That's a really old song. It's called Les Gens Urbaines. She went um, to. Uh, it's called like Star Academy. It's uh, almost like a Canadian Idol. Oh, but in Quebec. It okay. was like another version of it. She Star was, Academy. Yeah. Okay. She was part of the first one, and that was her album after she. She finished, like, the... finished it. Oh, she cool. didn't win, but she's amazing. Yeah. No, that that happens a lot, though. I think mm -hmm. there's always. There's so much talent in some of these contests, and there's only one winner, but you really like more than one person, right? Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that'll be interesting. I haven't heard any of these three songs before, so... Well, ex except the first one, but I haven't heard that French two. So it'll be fun to... A challenge. Whoa. Yeah, learn how to mix these. So the, the three songs that I chose uh, to mix together with these uh, three is uh, called Shooting Stars. It's a Bag Raiders cover by Elephant. To go along with the French theme, even though this is the, this guy's like an Asian DJ <laughs> from the U.S. <laughs> but uh, you know that there's a few of those memes where they uh, something happens and then, like for example, a guy falls and trips, and then all of a sudden he's like floating away, mm -hmm. and the song playing is like ding 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 ding. Yeah, it's a it's a cover of that song, and it sounds really cool. And it's then it's gonna be fun. Yeah, and he's Elephant is actually uh, the singer in the song too, so he made the instrumental and he sang. Like the cover is of this the his name, Elephant? I don't know. If, I don't know what his real name is. That's his like DJ name, his, his music producer name. Yeah, but yeah, that's the name. And then another song I'm gonna include is uh, "Sissy That Walk" by RuPaul, because uh, uh, RuPaul. Yeah. yeah, in RuPaul's Drag Race, uh, there's this song that played in a few seasons where they do the the catwalk the challenge. Catwalk. Yeah, and the song was always really cool. I always wanted to know what it was, and I looked it up after. 
and the whole song the whole song sounds really really good so it goes really well with kind of the whole um electronic dance music scene too so it's going to be fun to mix in and then the last song i chose is called turn back time by sub focus and i'm gonna have the steiner steiner bootleg i don't know who it is but it's a really cool remix of this uh really powerful vocals song i thought it was turn back time by Cher. no not that <laughs> <laughs> that'd be that'd be even more challenging to mix in with everything else. This one is this one is more energetic sounding too. And, okay. and stuff, so yeah, it'll be good. Yeah. So those are three I chose. I think those will go. I, I don't know what those two are like the, the two French ones, but I'll make it work somehow. It'll be a fun challenge. So yeah, those are the songs I have. Is there if anyone wants to find you or your makeup tutorials and stuff, where can they go? In case they want to follow up with you after this. Well, you can follow me on Instagram. It's uh, Jeff Brousseau, J-E-F-F-B-R-O-U-S-S-O. <laughs> okay, I'll write that in the description in case someone can't keep up with spelling. Yeah. Uh, okay, so yeah, you can follow him on Instagram. On Instagram. Yeah, yeah if you want to find those cool videos. Uh, for myself, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook under Beat on Bits. B D O N B I T S. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I have also, so like, if you just want to listen to my mixes, I'm on Mixcloud under Beat on Beats. <laughs> See the play. <laughs> Beats. Yeah. So if you like what you heard today, please uh, heart and follow on SoundCloud. Leave a review on iTunes or wherever you're listening to the podcast from. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Comment and subscribe on YouTube where you're watching us now. Yeah. Yeah. Leave some comments and we'll talk to you. Uh, and then, yeah, follow Twitter, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at Beat Bits. So that's all for today. Thanks for listening. Say bye, Jeff. Bye, Jeff. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs>